Hey, good afternoon. Hey, how's it going? It's all good. It's, uh, Thursday once again. It it always goes. It always passes so fast. Like we have the Thursday Thursday call, and then Friday, you know, Friday is maybe the lighter day. And then so we can. Then usually you are busy on Monday, Tuesday, and suddenly one week passed again, and we are back here. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yep. I feel the same. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's let's uh let's wait a, a minute or two uh for others. I believe uh I believe Bogdan is coming, but uh, usually he's here already. So let's give him a minute. And let's drop out this meeting analytics AI. Hey, good morning. Morning. So uh, let's get started. All right, welcome once again to um, Aries VC's Community Call. It's 2023, 18th of May. Um, these are Hyperledger Antitrust Policy Notice. All right, uh, so let's get into it. Um, yeah, so to kick off the meeting, uh, uh, I'm sure there's some people tuning into this uh, eager to hear about mentorship program update. Uh, so as you might know, we have entered, we have uh, entered the next stage of the program uh, where the application has been closed and uh, now it's time for us, the mentors, to go through the uh, go through the applications and um, select uh, two applicants, one for each of the two projects we uh, we have out there. Um, there has been uh, over fifty full applications for the two projects overall, so uh, very high interest. Uh, there's a uh, uh, lots of lots of smart people and uh, hardworking, apparently hardworking and eager, eager people to to work with us has, has applied. So it will be difficult, uh, difficult to choose only two. I mean, uh, lots of people. So please don't be disappointed if you are not chosen. But uh, we'll we'll try to uh, um, we'll we'll be going over uh, over the applications. Uh, by the end of the month, and by the end of the month. Um, now moving on to the good first issues. Um, uh, we have well, I'll start with the easier piece. Uh, the, there's a new issue I have created, um, and then just some refactoring, some code, moving uh, some functions from one crate to another. Uh, I think it's uh, should be fairly clear, but if you would like to pick this up and you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask here. And uh, other thing uh, kind of up for discussion, I just had this idea uh, that uh, uh, we would kind of try to ask people you know, or like try to live by this kind of rule that uh, 
it's for people who do like good first issues uh, a, a person shouldn't you know try to try to book multiple good first issues at, at once unless uh, 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 you know unless there's something uh, like, like uh, one person should only have one good first issue in progress and rather, you know try to really motivate people to finish things till the end than uh, kind of trying to book up multiple issues at the same time but then uh, you know, may maybe maybe not get them done and perhaps like discourage others to picking picking that issue up yeah good idea because uh, yeah uh, I just uh, it's it's nothing. I mean, uh, uh, if we have uh, the the listeners here, um, don't don't take this in any way uh, personally. Just I saw that uh, um, was uh, issues. Uh, I, I just saw this Suman T X D. He 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 wrote on the multi multiple of the issues. I think that he would like to pick them up. Um, but I know there's uh, there's an issue from him in in progress and it needs to be kind of driven to the end. So, uh, so yeah, Sumanti, if you are tuning into this, uh, let let's try to finish this one up before uh, picking up the other other pieces. Uh, all right, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that there is an interest uh, and uh, people want to work on these things. It's it's awesome, but uh, I, I love to see even in, even more when we when we are merging this PR. And uh, now linking to to that topic, actually, I'll move on to the work which has been done since last week. So there has been a, a successful uh, like a, new, a recent contributor. I think not first time contributor, but maybe second PR uh, from from uh, uh, uh this has been merged so props props to you thank you for contribution uh, and then uh, moving to other stuff uh, those uh, small kind of refactoring or rather just renaming uh, where we renamed uh, the dog builder crate to the dog uh and and uh our original did dog without underscore to did dog legacy and the plan will be now to go ahead and basically get rid of this and instead in, in favor of the did dog which is much more robust uh great to work with uh that's uh, still pending work to be done um uh, next up we had um uh, extended a verifiers API to accept like a wider range of uh, ed essentially additional format of the input, which is more powerful. There's some rational here explaining uh, what exactly is going on. Um, and lastly, uh, uh, probably the biggest piece which has been merged since last week uh, was uh, implementation of base ledger trait using on, on top of VDR proxy client. So essentially uh, this enables you to uh, use Ares VCX, but uh, call the ledger through in the VDR proxy. Uh, so this is pretty cool. And also part of this PR uh, was uh, uh, quite nice refactoring kind of uh, decoupling of different uh, components uh, in particular the uh, the submitter trait has been taken out and so uh, now we have individual implementation but that can be injected with uh, different like tra transaction submitters and so one submitter the o o original one would essentially submit transactions through zero and queue directly, whereas the, the new submitter uh, Mira has implemented here would be submitting transactions through individual proxy, aka uh, HTTPS. Um, so that's, that was pretty nice. Um, that's all we'll have, that, that's what we have uh, done. And uh, we have lots of stuff in progress right now as well. So 
linking to the VDR proxy and all the ledger stuff, we have in the VDR uh, ledger uh, response parser. And this is amazing again. Uh, this has, there has been lots of messy code originally, uh, kind of due to, to kind of, I, I guess it was like, uh, like uh, easy approach to parse transactions and it and it worked, uh, but uh, nevertheless, it was hard to deal with and hard to verify whether the implementation is actually correct or not. And so uh, there's this parser now, which is uh, basically all these uh, methods uh, are much shorter now. Instead, we are calling this parser. And if we look at the implementation of this parsing method, uh, kind of review this at high level. Uh, where is this? That would be probably the parser, ah, oh, lib lib.rs. And what the what this parsing method does is um, it uh, parses the string response from the ledger to a date, you know, typed. Um, typed uh, data model of uh, ledger responses and and all these basically ledger ledger response types are in the domain directory right here um, and this was not written from scratch instead this was taken out literally like copy pasted out of uh, vdr tools so this this seems to be like pretty useful piece of vdr tools we took it out it's it's duplicated right now um, as, as this code is also used inside of VDR tools itself, uh, but it uh, serves the purpose uh, well here. And so what do we do in these parsing methods again? Uh, we, we get the string response from, you know, VDR, uh, in the VDR submitter, a transaction submitter, then we pass the string to this parser, we map it into basically parse it into the like ledger kind of response data model. And then we remap the ledger response model to, to the uh this unknown cred. Well, it's not exactly the the credx types which in the VDR base ledger uh implementation is returning. So that will be returning these uh, in the data types. Uh, where is it? Let's see some example. Oh, there's a schema one. Uh, schema is taken from. Yeah, in the VDR ledger. Wait, these are requests. What are we returning here? Oh, I can open it up. Just give me one second. Uh, um, parse get get credential definition response. Uh, this is the alleged response, and what we return from here. This goes to yeah. This is in the in the uh, data types, which is from the in the shared RS repository, aka credix and family. So that's how this works. Um, yeah, and so it's it's pretty uh, like nice. Uh, it, it it's it it feels much safer now. So um, does that that new create the indie ledger response parser? Does that have any dependencies on VDR tools, or is it completely separate? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe it. Uh, does we can check that out the ledger parser yeah so it uh right okay well this is in the literally the tools in the data types and you you were asking about in the data types right uh if it depended on vdr tools at all and ah uh, right yeah Seem, seems like it does so far i'm not exactly sure why since a whole bunch of code was uh like copy pasted extracted out of vdr tools 
um, in the data types. We can take a quick look because I'm not sure myself. Oh, okay. Seems like it's only some sort of error types. Oh, okay. Not sure why. I feel like this would be uh, possible to get rid of. It seems like mm. just error types. Maybe kind of a shortcut. Um, yeah, maybe part of the copy pasting was just to do that for now. Mm. Mm. But yeah, guys, uh, I, I reviewed this already and looks like good to me. But uh, go ahead and take a look as well. Uh, I don't want to merge it with like just on my own. So if we have at least two approvals, would be nice. All right. Um, let's let's go further. Um, right. This is in progress, but uh, it's it's waiting for review essentially. Uh, response bars, this one. Uh, the next step we have uh, typing for the true structures. Uh, it's uh, yours, George. Uh, I know you described it very nicely in this issue. Uh, easy to read. So I don't, mm -hmm. think, I don't think we have to like go through it or explain it too much, but uh, um, you, you want to leave uh, some words here? Um, yeah, I think I think uh, all I have left is to fix up some tests. Um, yeah, like the the types for both APIs are all there, and um, just been reworking the tests to use types instead. Um, and I also found some older tests that were forcing itself to use indie and not try to use modular libs so now i'm trying to rework some of them so it tests on both um but yeah hopefully i could finish this soon um yeah it, it's good to get away from a lot of the json manipulation that was going on previously yeah sorry actually i dropped off for a second or two uh, actually for a couple of seconds i didn't hear everything but i'm sure it's recorded but uh um yeah i guess what you're saying is that you that basically you got rid of those strings right that's the main idea yeah yeah exactly and so uh internally we don't have to manipulate jason's as much um yeah yeah, that, that's that's really awesome. I mean, this kind of changes is a the, the technical depth which was uh, spooking us for a long time. Finally, happy to see this cleaning up. Also, uh, around the trades, uh, uh, that's actually the next item here. So, uh, also the typing around the trades, we have the tech bash working on um, on the typing here and around the base wallet trade interface. And I see it's just missing some tests. So hopefully you can drive this. I, I see that uh, it is uh, kind of actively working on this. Uh, so that's, uh, that's great. Uh, even yeah. if it takes. I've been, I've been helping him a bit with this. It seems pretty close. Um, mm. Just some of the uh, data mappings uh are not working um but i think it should be an easy fix um at the moment not to speak on his behalf but it seems like it's mostly been working on uh fixing the tags json part of the original issue um mm -hmm. but there's still the wallet record struct um that needs to be implemented so maybe that could be another pr um I'll, I'll I'll let him know after this call there, and mm. see what he wants to do. Awesome, awesome, very nice. Uh, okay, and uh, lastly, uh, uh, we have this item uh, for critics bait issuer, and that's been uh, researched, uh, and I guess uh, this one worked on as well by Bogdan. Uh, there is not any PR yet, but I know. It's in progress. So, uh, uh, how how it's going? Uh yeah, it's uh, slow but steady, pretty much. 
Um, the PR will come soon. The thing is that I didn't really have anything to, let's say anything worth looking at. So mm -hmm. I didn't push anything yet. Uh, but I'm actually just one method away from the trade to kind of having it all implemented, um, at least as an initial draft, I guess. So then it can be reviewed and we can start implementing tests and whatnot to see that it's actually working. Um, yeah, so it's things are moving. Um, definitely the, the typing would have helped with uh, all of this, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there hmm. soon enough. Sounds good. Uh, as in the non-creds RS typing? No, no, no. It's like just credits. I'm referring to the to having strong types to the right. traits and everything because I don't know, I'm, for me, not being that familiar with how everything works, although this is an opportunity to kind of go in depth and learn more, so that's that's good but not being extremely familiar with how everything works kind of makes it difficult to track because you're just getting a string here a string there you have to convert it to something pass it somewhere it gets converted <laughs> internally again and it's, it's like a whole mess and you kind of lose track of what you're expecting where and how it's supposed to look like and all that stuff um but yeah we're gonna fix that one day. So looking forward to that. Have you um have you had to store stuff in the wallet? Um yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, and uh, we're also gonna need um that's basically the remaining thing. We're gonna need a, the, a reference or basically just the wallet handle to not the wallet, sorry, the ledger, uh for when revocations are getting published by the issuer um uh, so there's, no, uh, there's right. no way around that right. um yeah so i'm gonna have to extend that type just a bit um i, I don't expect it to be that big of a deal like i said um, like the implementation itself go ahead patrick uh i'm just uh not sure uh, you said uh, the, the uh that caught my attention the part with the, the ledger and the publishing because uh Hmm. Miro was doing is happening some in... modification, and I'm just not sure if you. I think he broke down some trait method into like two smaller methods, and it was something about the revocation and the ledger. And I'm just not sure if you if you have the latest version, uh, and maybe they'll I solve mean, your problem. You know, if things should... got merged, they probably don't. But um... yeah. Let me have a look at this. Oh, where do I find it? RZ6 core and then anon creds, credx anon creds. And it should be the last one publish something, publish revocations. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was that. Let me just to make sure. Publish local revo revocations. Yeah, yeah, that's what he kind of uh, split into two methods essentially. So you don't, you won't not need ledger because he tweaked the interface such that it's not here anymore; it's somewhere else. Okay. Uh, show history for selection. Yeah, it 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 used to be like this: publish local allocations, and okay. and that method internally basically was calling these two methods, and this. Two methods they deal with the wallet because that's where we uh, store the intermediate delta after the rev revocation has been applied. Yeah, but it's not about the wallet. Uh, so okay, the wallet the wallet is already there anyway. So hmm. that's that. Uh, I believe. Like, did the type change? Can you have a look? Uh, sorry, not type? here. Not here. Yeah, the, the the actual type that the trait is implemented for. I don't know what it's called. Uh, no, it's, well, it's still base. Oh wait, this is this is the base trait. Okay, can you have a look at the at the credits oh, implementation? Yeah. So unimplemented. Right, like that. that's fine. But can you can you scroll up a bit? Uh, more, more. Like where the type is defined. It is the same type. Okay, so the wallet is still there. 
Yeah, because I think like there are a lot of places where you need wallet made here. So if you only change that, okay. Mm. But so how does it work now? So, uh, so it was uh, it was actually this PR. Uh, I think that was kind of merged at the uh, at the verge of when you were starting and when he was like. Uh, it was merged around the time we were starting on this and i think uh you missed it i think we went through this pr last week or like mentioned it and it was this split publish local locations okay um, yeah i didn't see this yeah well she did like necessary modifications okay. in the code to avoid you know having an on credit straight to be aware of ledger Sweet. okay cool um all right then i'll uh, i'll rebase and that means it's going to be easier to implement that last part um and then we should be able to have a look at this too and i can start start looking at tests hmm. so okay that's even better let's work sorry so so you, you won't need the ledger in the non creds implementation yeah yeah oh, great. i assume I mean that's what that's what it looks like. That was the purpose of the PR Patrick just showed. So, yeah. and apparently him, um, Mira also modified the in the implementation, like the LiveVDR tools implementation. Hmm. That's basically the whole idea, not to depend on the pool handle. So I assume the ledger uh, transaction sending was moved somewhere up yeah. in the stack, or technically down in the stack. But anyway. <laughs> um yeah cool yeah all right and um, almost there in terms of the credits issuer mm -hmm. we'll see how the how the testing goes and the compatibility issues we might run into and the migration that gives things like that it can be still a bit of a challenge yeah so i mean the implementation like this first draft um was one side of things then there's going to be testing but then i guess the most kind of important part will be um to kind of have that uh, migration in place like we discussed with george i believe last week to have some sort of routine that runs um when you know when the agent starts or something so that it's going to migrate these credentials and all the wallet objects um to the credix implementation from the vdr tools Mm. And then we should be able to kind of drop the PDR tools, at mm. least most part of it. That that would be a separate PR, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know, maybe, probably. I guess I guess it's it would be a separate PR. So the PR for this will basically just revolve around the Credix issuer implementation, and maybe having the tests pass. Um, and once that's done, we can have the migration implemented and it can be like completely separate it doesn't even have to be here it has to be it just can be some sort of binary that gets called or something i don't know uh, or even just some library in one method um but yeah so i guess that would make things easy uh at least from a I don't know, implementation perspective and then we would be able to kind of drop the uh, legacy libvdr tools apart from the wallet hmm. yeah that's right i think we're gonna get rid of lots of code i'm very much excited for that uh as i was saying before i'll be uh, definitely opening champagne when we uh delete like thirty thousand lines of code <laughs> I think um that there might still be some remaining parts of the indie VDR ledger implementation um that would need to be implemented um to fully use modular libs as an issuer. Um yeah, right. there, there's some yeah, remaining. yeah, yeah. I, I know that um Mira yeah, he's he's aware of it and uh I think he was saying that he, he's kind of waiting for the the credit based issuer to be implemented 
for him to kind of reasonably uh, be able to test the NVIDIA issue. Now, I don't really remember like the particular reason why is that so, uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's what I remember. But wait, so what's what's the problem regarding the ledger? Um, uh, so does, uh, you can explain if you want, Patrick. No, 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 go, go ahead. Oh yeah, um, so when you're using a modular profile, um, mm -hmm. as in you're using the NVIDIA ledger plus credx and non-creds, um, there's still some issuer-related ledger transactions that haven't been implemented for the NVIDIA um, implementation. Um, I, I think specifically around some revocation publishing type transactions. Um, okay. And so, yeah, I'm sort of I'm sort of worrying now that in order for you to fully test uh, the the credx and non creds uh, issuer functionality, some of this ledger publishing implementation might need to be fleshed out as well, um, or it can be left till later and. It wouldn't so be fully tested. Technically, you could use like uh, I I believe you, you know, in order to test credx, I guess technically you could use combination of like credx ish like uh like uh, credx and on creds plus VDR tools ledger. All right, that that should work. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. the same ledger, the same ecosystem. It's still indie, mm -hmm. so it should be fine. Yeah. Um, but so I see that the ledger, there's the base ledger trait and it has two implementations right now, Indy ledger and Indy VDR ledger. Um, so I assume the VDR, the Indy VDR ledger is the VDR tools implementation. No, it's, it's actually yeah. the other way around. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so in the ledger is the like VDR tools ledger. <laughs> I, I can see how this is confusing. And it's called actually to, in the SDK ledger to make it more confusing. I have and to admit. VDR ledger, that's the, that's the, that's the individual. Uh, you, you dropped out for a second, Patrick. Our tools and individual is individual. You, you dropped out for a second, Patrick. Ah. Uh, hey. Couldn't hear what you were saying, but I, I got oh, yeah. it. Yeah, it just it just kind of uh, easy to get the names like confused in the yeah. VDR and VR tools. I I just want to say that uh, it makes me feel better about myself when I see that other people are as bad as at naming as I am. <laughs> so, I mean, it's hard to reach my performance, but uh, <laughs> you guys are getting close. So <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, all right. So then the Indy ledger is the, okay, Indy SDK and VDR ledger. That makes sense because I see stuff is not implemented here. Okay. But I, I still don't think there are, there would be issues necessarily in terms of um, like using the, the, let's say legacy ledger. Yeah, I I think so. I think that's really fine. I mean, it, would, it, was like, it would make testing pretty complicated because um, at the moment why? it's set up to use uh, at the moment it's set up to use the modular libs profile, um, which is mm. how the VDR ledger and the credx uh, implementations get their coverage, get their testing done. I um, see. So if you were to switch that to the VDR tools ledger, then you're missing a lot of coverage and testing for um, the VDR, indie VDR ledger. Jeez, this is hard I to see. keep up with these names. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, but that should be fine. I mean, like, if, just for purpose of testing, like, uh, credx implementation of Anoncred, we could, like, uh, switch uh, tweak that profile to essentially use VDR tools ledger, but then obviously we don't want to affect uh, like coverage in CI, so we could keep that. And I don't know, we can like uh, 
like you know, add a new job which is like using a profile with different combination just i mean we, we won't decrease the coverage but uh we can find a way to test uh, critics if in the meantime uh, the issue portion of uh in the vdr ledger is not yet implemented yeah fair enough okay um I'll, I'll i'll work around it and maybe implement another profile and combine the two things that's cool mm. yeah um, I think but okay. um just just on that uh if, if we go that route maybe just add a comment that we should get rid of it as soon as possible um oh yes it'll be a nightmare to maintain like three different testing profiles <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. But but Miro is uh, he's aware of it, and he, he yeah. you know, it's uh, he's now like uh, like uh, deep uh, like rabbit hole down in uh, all the ledger stuff. So he'll finish this piece as well. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. And then we can just unify it and use in the VDR, get rid of uh, VDR tools ledger completely. And the put itself, I guess, uh, enable us to lead lots of code. All right. Uh, and now I guess it's kind of bring us almost to the end. Uh, this is just kind of leftover from the last week, but nevertheless, I guess the priorities are pretty clear. Just kind of uh, sort out these like interfaces, these, uh, these ledger trades and own credits trades and, and uh, basically everything we discussed. And a type state pattern, I guess it was kind of shifted right now on like a second rail, like uh, uh, in, in favor of this, uh, this breakdown. But uh, if I'll have time, I would, well, uh, what I personally wanted to, as, as for myself, as uh, in a role of uh, implementer, uh, I would like to get, uh, I'm planning to get, uh, to be working on the ddog create uh ddog create integration so we could get rid of the ddog legacy but then after that i would like to move on to the type state pattern and perhaps continue in the holder um and uh, if uh, time allows then try to implement a counterparty and finally do some testing but uh yeah we'll see we'll see who, who yeah that. so um just wanted to kind of add maybe the reason of why this moved to a secondary uh, position in terms of priorities because the, the 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 ledger and the wallet stuff and the anon cred stuff they're like lower level more close to the foundation of the entire library so it's better to kind of start from the bottom up rather than um start from the top and modify the um i mean it's not necessarily that it's bad but it's just it would just make everything much simpler um to kind of accommodate the lower levels and the core of the library in the, the protocols and the state machines once that's done rather than do it the other way around and work a lot on the protocols and state machines and then realize yeah but we need to do a lot of work on the uh on the aries vcx core stuff uh, uh, not necessarily that they're uh, maybe i don't know um conflicting as much but in terms of functionality a state machine is used in one protocol but this stuff this is being used across the entire library right so uh, it kind of makes sense that it's um, more important to kind of finish that first and then move to the other parts um Maybe there's also the aspect of, maybe George knows what I'm talking about, uh, the matter of kind of the, the, I don't know, maybe let's call them problems or breaking changes that would come with the implementations of the type state patterns for the state machines. Um, I don't know, like there's a lot to, to discuss in terms of how to implement them. Um, and maybe what changes we should make, what changes we should not make. Um, because like not only is the, I guess it also depends on how we're gonna go about it, whether just do type state first and then maybe work towards the, um, the, the modify states 
um, to kind of have them about message generation and not message sending. But that means the states change and the serialization format changes. And as a result, things might be, you know, uh, different. So we also kind of have to consider that. Just, just brainstorming. Ignore me if I'm babbling around. Uh, no, you're totally right. Yeah, it's a very difficult problem. Yeah, and the thing is that um, at least because I, I wanted to kind of work on implementing that um, these kind of states for the connection, kind of have that finished as a state machine that's in you know the, the condition we want all of them to get to. So kind of have that as a, some sort of a model. But um, the idea is that I basically just looked and thought about it a lot. And I mean, this thing came around with the core traits. So that's more important right now. Um, but a lot of questions kind of popped into my head about how to go about this. Um, and pretty much just the consequences that this will have and how to go about that. And the thing that's um, important is with the states changing and maybe holding some sort of message, because that was the point, right? You, the, the state is not no longer going to be about the message was sent. The state is about the message is generated. You can pick it up from here, send it however many times you want and handle the errors that can come from that. Um, but I'm fairly confident that with, the with how the states are right now and how the states would look like with that done, um, I'm not sure there's going to, there's always going to be a conversion that can happen between an old state and a new state because the message might contain additional stuff that's simply not available in the state machine um, as they are right now. So we kind of have to, to see how to go about that. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I mean, you might we might do changes which might not be like not every old state might be possible to map out to like a new state right that that's yeah like... yeah yeah that's that's what i mean so there's a lot to discuss there in terms of how to go about it um but yeah just uh this is just a heads up um you will you'll see you'll see what i mean but again, we can maybe focus on just getting the type state pattern because that would also make everything a bit, not a bit, but a lot nicer to look and work with, uh, to look at and work with, because uh, the states would be more well-defined and the transitions would be better defined. And that doesn't necessarily change the states themselves, at least not that much and not in an incompatible manner, I believe. Like we can, we can definitely arrange something. Um, so maybe we can focus on that first and then kind of think about how to go about uh, the state changes themselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think we should just like uh, re-implement those state machines, like uh, just kind of forget how it was and just do like a best version of the state machines we can. Mm. And then retroactively see like, okay, can we like, first of all, like, do we want or that do we need is is there people who need like to do these conversions and then uh what's what's the how can we reasonably if yes then how can we somehow reasonably convert the old state machines to the new ones if we decide to do it George, George. Yeah, yes. uh, sorry just um on twenty first second i guess the the um, the tricky states are really the intermediate states so the like the beginning the beginner states or the beginning states incipient states and the complete states or final states uh, initial and final states should be fairly easy to map because there's not a lot going on right so um, ultimately if the protocol is, has just started or is complete you kind of end up with the same stuff, and especially because there aren't really messages to send. Uh, where in the initial state, if there are messages to send, then they're constructed from pretty much nothing, right? So that should be doable. Um, 
And I guess that's an important thing because if you're in the middle of a protocol and you lose that state machine, I know it cannot be converted because the state's changed. I guess you can restart the protocol and whatnot. Um, probably the more the more important part is having the complete uh, protocols still there. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, the, usually you like typically these protocols they conclude quickly. Like they either right. finish or never finish, and it's right. Not, it's not like uh, you keep the state machines in like uh, intermediate state for days, I think. Uh, I guess there mm -hmm. could be cases maybe with issuance of credentials, but uh, I think it's kind of an edge case. What's your take, uh, George, on, on this you know possible issue with conversions of uh, intermediate type stamp, you know, of old intermediate states to like a, a new states with a type stamp pattern? Um, yeah, I think it's going to be extremely hard, if not impossible, to have some of the old serialized formats um, be able to deserialize into the the new mm -hmm. um, transitions, um, which is partly why I've, I was pushing for the the from parts and into parts um, concepts a while ago, um, because mm -hmm. that lets consumers such as myself now um, be able to get the raw parts of what's being stored in that state machine such as the the underlying messages that are being used and things like that and so then if there's this huge migration to this new um, type state pattern uh, then you don't have to worry about serialization formats because you have the raw data in your own format um, yeah, um, I, but, I don't. Go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna say I think in general um, that's maybe the approach that we should encourage people to take rather than relying on a serialized format and storing that uh, in their database or wherever for a long period of time and expecting it to always be compatible. It's sure. it's risky for them. Right. So. The thing is that I am sure that doesn't help at all with the, the problem that we're going to have because mm -hmm. the, the front parts thing kind of takes the state itself. Um, and even if you break that down, like the problem comes from the fact that in, in the current, in the states as they are right now, there is some information, but that information, I'm sure that in some cases is not enough. It's simply not enough to construct the message, like the full message that you would be sending um which will be actually stored in the new states so regardless of how you split that consumers will simply not have the data that they need to reconstruct that message um, in some cases mm. and therefore i don't i don't think that's necessarily a problem yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Maybe just to clarify it more uh, is like, for example, let's find some state machines which is doing which, some particular example where this will be you know, impossible. But what, what you described, the issuance uh, holder state machine, there must be some sent state uh, request sent. Yeah, that could be a good uh, candidate, I think. Request send state. Uh, send re request. Send request. Okay, so so when you are like, for example, right now when you are in the state offer, credential offer received. And then you decide to like proceed, right? You would call function send request. And what it does is it will like generate credential request out of that offer, which you store, and it will just like send that credential request. And that will bring you to state. Uh, 
credential re request send state, right? But and, and here you no longer store the the message, you know, the credential request message you have generated. By I have by, another example. If yeah, you but, but with the new the new design, right? I think even if I look at uh, the PR from from George, there's already if we look at the at the states. Um, um, There is going to be state request prepared, which contains credential request message. So if you previously stored like state machine in the request send state, it's impossible to, and, and this is kind of equivalent of it because here you prepare it. And then as a, as a owner of the state machine, you need to take care of sending, right? Then then it will be impossible to basically map this state onto this state because uh, this piece of information uh, is uh, is missing here. All right. Um, well, just thinking on the spot about that, um, I, I don't think it would matter if you had already sent that request message um, in this old uh state machine pattern and then you convert it into the new type state pattern you can probably could just put a dummy message in there because you don't mm. care about that message you've already sent it um that's true yeah theoretically i think that would be true mm, fair enough yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, it sounds like it could work. <clears throat> Sorry, but um, it also sounds like it can cause more trouble or confusion rather than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe another example of, uh, of this is in the connection. If you look at the inviter states. Connection inviter states. Yeah, and if you look at the responded state, so this means that the response, the signed response, was sent, um, which in the future, with the approach we want to take, the response will, the signed response will actually be stored in here, and consumers would take it from here and send it, right? Um, right now, we actually have the response, but it's in the requested state. So the request comes in and this message is processed and the response is generated. Um, and it's basically sent from there. But like with the transition itself from requested to responded is about sending that signed response. If you look in the requested state, it's just a file above. Um, that's going to make a bit more sense. But if you were to map these states to the new format, um, you cannot map this, the requested state to the responded state. Although, yeah, actually, technically you could. That, um, I assume that's what it really means. You have the sign response and then you have to send it. But yeah, I don't know. It, it mm. might be confusing. Yeah, yeah maybe. Let's just implement those new state machines like you know the proper way, and then um, I guess we'll see. I, right. I, 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 maybe there will be strategies to like make a compromise, like for example, as with the filling the dummy message, and maybe that could like uh, be potential solution how to migrate like all state machines, kind of convert them to the new one, even with the intermediate states. Um, I guess, but we'll see when we start working on it. Yeah, I think George might be onto something in terms of that we might be able to map, um, maybe not like not the one or not exactly the same state like like it's here, the requested state, the old requested state in the connection to the new requested state in the connection, but rather the requested state here. It might not be the case everywhere, but the requested state here would 
technically be mapped to the responded state in the future because mm. um, that's when the response is generated y yeah yes. type state was a bit of a an edge case right where we're generating the message um before yeah this is an edge case yeah uh, i wanted to change it but <laughs> yeah i wanted to change it when i worked on this but it would be breaking it was breaking a lot of stuff so i kind of just left it like that um yeah. make it a problem for another day but yeah okay we'll see but yeah this was mainly just a, a heads up hmm. okay guys uh, uh, just one, sorry one, did, did that yeah, yeah. sorry uh, did that discussion start with us saying that core work should be the first priority there <laughs> Or was that not the the takeaway? What what should be priority? Oh, I, I thought that conversation just then uh, started with um, that we should approach things bottom up and look at the core implementation before mm. type states. Yeah, I mean it's kind of what we ended up doing. Uh, not necessarily <laughs> that it would be a problem. Um, there's a lot of work in both places, so. And it, it's not that they're conflicting that much, but it's more about the impact, I guess, that the changes have. So the, the core traits and Aries VCX core overall kind of has, is being used, you know, across the entirety of Aries VCX of the library. Um, whereas a, a state machine or a single protocol is basically more um, self-contained. So, that that's really just all there is to it it's mostly about the impact all of it is important work nevertheless yeah for sure all right uh i just wanted to note uh like one one thing actually i guess uh maybe not yet in progress but uh, definitely upcoming uh as, as miro is uh neck deep in uh, in ledger stuff he also wants to implement caching for uh, in the vdr because in the vdr itself doesn't cache anything so now he's basically did this like uh sub uh, like a transaction submitter component then uh then the one in uh, waiting for review is the like response parser and then one more component to be added uh, is the uh, like caching component. And technically, you could swap out the caching components as you want if you have a custom implant implementation for it. But we'll be definitely providing something. And so, yeah, I'll be caching. I I'm sure, George, you you will appreciate that uh, upgrade, especially like in mo mobile environment. I feel like it could be useful. Yeah, especially around revocation proofs. I find that sometimes it can take like 10 seconds to create a proof just because of all the ledger transactions that need to happen. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's that's so hot. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, th I think caching shouldn't be too bad um, because the VDR, Indie VDR ledger implementation already has access to a wallet. So theoretically, the cache could just be wallet records. Um, yeah but um my only uh suggestion around that if you if you're taking suggestions is maybe the the caching should be optional and there's some flag to oh yeah in. yeah definitely. i mean um it's it's very like caching is as they say like the hardest pro problems in a cs is caching and naming variables right so like Caching is very opinionated, like when do you invalidate cache and how do you do it and stuff like that. So it will yeah. be definitely like optional and swappable. So you could you could use your, use your own or not use it at all if you would like to. Uh, but so you were suggesting that the, the wallet uh, could be used for caching, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it could be for sure. Um, I was thinking about doing that myself as a as a consumer. Um, right. But yeah, the VDR ledger already has access to the wallet, so may as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Mira is, uh, is in plans like uh, about the uh, 
implementation in particular, but I'll definitely let him know. And I think he's just about to start uh, this kind of this piece. Yeah, mm. there should be other implementations to look at as well. I think Akapai, Akapai's usage of IndieVDR might put some caching on top. Um, and also, of course, VDR tools, I believe, does caching. Um, mm. Yep. IndieVDR is doing caching? Oh, sorry. Uh, VDR tools, I believe. Oh, has right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you said the right. Maybe I just misheard. I'm not sure. But yeah, VDR tools. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Um. Yeah, and I guess I guess that kind of that's kind of uh, concluding uh, our our call. It's it's so uh, yeah, just one minute after well, we started. One minute after, so it's perfect. Sixty minutes. Mm -hmm. Um. And anything else? uh from your side guys did you go to the open wallet meeting oh yeah um, unfortunately I, I missed it so uh, i want to take a look at the recording and try to form my opinion and some thoughts about it yeah cool do you know if it was recorded uh, i believe so yeah because it's uh it was just basically just like regular aries board group call and uh, all these hyperledger calls are recorded, so it, it should be up there. Cool. Okay, guys. Uh, it's uh, Friday. Uh, we can come in soon again. And so have a wonderful rest of your day and Enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Cheers. See you. Bye.